Hello. In this video, we're going to look at sampling distributions of the sample mean. Imagine a rectangular distribution, uh, a distribution with equal number of events, a, a bag of balls, if you will, a number from 0 to 32, and sampling with replacement. So every ball is as likely to be picked as any other. You're as likely to get values close to 0 and close to 32. What happens when we take a sample of size 16? Well, imagine trying to take that first sample. Some of the values are close to the middle, some of them are close to the ends, and they're all spread out really. But it does give us one observed sample mean. This one observed sample mean could be close to the middle, it could be somewhat pulled to one end, depending on the individual values in the sample. Let's do it again. Here again, we see them all roughly spread out, creating a observed sample mean again, close to the middle, but this one is different to the original one. And we can carry on doing this, and each one of these blue squares represents a different sample mean. In reality, we only get to do the sample once, and we don't know whether our sample mean is one of these pulled down on the left or one of the other two. We have no way of knowing because we don't know anything about the parent population. That's the whole point of taking a sample. However, we do know quite a few things. It is highly unlikely that we get an observed sample mean way down here on the left or way up here on the right because that would mean that virtually all the values would have to be at one end of the range and the likelihood of that happening is very very low. Realistically most of the time we should get a bunch of values to the left of the mean and a bunch of values to the right of the mean roughly half and half. So the majority of the time we'd expect our observed sample mean to be close to in this case the middle of the distribution. The likelihood of getting one right down the edges is very, very low indeed, and the likelihood of getting it towards the middle is more likely. So that suggests certainly a distribution which is nothing like the original distribution here, if it's more likely to occur in the middle than it is at the edges. And again, we don't know which one of these sample means uh, we really have. We don't know how it fits. But if we imagine doing this same thing repeatedly, and again you'll see that virtually all the values are close to the middle, it's very, very like, unlikely to have values away from the middle. And if we did it 20,000 times, the distribution would look like this. Clearly, this looks something like a normal distribution. If we have a look at the mean, the observed mean from 20,000 repetitions is 15.97 and actually the population true mean is 16, so that's close, definitely. And the observed standard deviation is 2.41, whereas the standard deviation of the whole population is 9.52. Hmm, 2.41. Well, that's about a quarter, isn't it? Actually, if I calculate it, 2.41 divided by 9.52 is just over 25%, 0.253. What if I did it 30,000, 40,000, 70,000? What if I did this 100,000 times? And here we see that the mean of all the sample means is 16, the same as the true population mean, and the standard deviation of all the sample means is 2.38, which is precisely exactly one quarter of the population standard deviation. We had a sample of size 16, and the standard deviation of the sampling distribution is one quarter that of the underlying distribution. Hmm. Let's try again. This time, let's have a sample of size 25. So again, picking lots of values, doing it unaware of the true population, we've just got our, 20, our 25 values and that gives us a value for the sample mean. In this case, clearly, you can see it's close to the middle of the distribution. Do it again, and again we have 
values throughout the range from 0 to 32. In this case, the, the, it really is going across the whole range. And we can do this repeatedly, and again, and again. And if we did it 10,000 times, 20,000 times, 30,000 times, and 40,000 times, we see that the distribution of all the possible sample means looks normal. The mean is 15.99, the true population mean is 16, and in this case the standard deviation is 1.90, and 1.90 is one-fifth of 9.5. So the distribution of the sample mean of size 25 has a standard deviation which is one-fifth of the standard deviation of the underlying population. This is an example of the central limit theorem. Basically, irrespective of whatever distribution your original population is, if you take a sample of size large enough, then the distribution from which these sample means belong is approximately normal. And again, irrespective of the original distribution, the mean of the original distribution is 8.08, .08. the observed mean of, of all the possible 70,000 samples is 8.07 and the standard deviation was 6.22 and the standard deviation of the sampling distribution is 1.25 which is one-fifth of that. So if the underlying population has a true mean mu and a true standard deviation sigma then absolutely the distribution of the sample mean the average of the individual values where each of those values are independent observations of the population, then the distribution of the sample mean will have an expected value equal to the true population mean and will have a variance equal to sigma squared over n. This is irrespective of any other considerations. Absolutely, the expected value of the sample mean is equal to the true population mean and the variance of the sample mean is sigma squared over n. However, Aside from this, we wouldn't know precisely how the sample mean is itself distributed. However, combinations of normal variables are themselves normal, so if the underlying population is itself normal, then the distribution of the sample mean, even if it's just a sample of size 2, will be normal. If the underlying population is roughly normal-ish, then even small sample sizes will yield a sampling distribution which is normal. Obviously, the less normalish the parent distribution is, the larger the sample size we would need to be confident that we can ensure approximate normality of the distribution of the sample mean. However, even if the underlying population is decidedly non-normal, samples of size 50 should certainly generate a sampling distribution of the mean which is itself normal. This is the central limit theorem. Even if we know nothing about the underlying population distribution, then the distribution of the sample mean from sample sizes of 50 or larger should be normal distributed. Even if they're offensively non-normal in the original population, then it would still have a normal distribution if we take a sample of size large enough. So here I'm going to create a decidedly non-normal parent distribution. So here we've got a density going on all over the place, which is very weird. And we're going to take the largest sample I can, which you know, on this simulation is a sample of size 25. And when I take my sample, of course, I have all those individual 25 results, and it gives me a single value. If I do it again, I get a few more. If I were to do it 10,000 times, or 20,000 times, or 30,000 times, then even though the original distribution is decidedly offensively non-normal, it is certainly the case that the overall distribution of the sample mean, even though we're only on samples of size 25, is definitely normal-ish. And again, we can see that from a hundred from a hundred and forty thousand samples the true population mean is fourteen point four four and the observed mean from all these hundred and forty thousand samples is fourteen point four four the standard deviation is nine point four six and our standard deviation is nine point four six uh, divided by five which is one point eight nine 
So this confirms that even if the underlying population is decidedly non-normal, then for sample sizes large enough, the distribution of the sample mean will be normal, with the same mean as the population mean and the variance equal to the population variance, sigma squared, divided by the sample size, or standard deviation sigma over root n.